Hello, I'm Valerie Weber from the Yuma Main Library. Throughout history, the significance of facial hair has been largely determined by civilization and culture. As they are easily manipulated, beards and mustaches have long been used to signify what religion or ethnic group a man belongs to, his social standing, and his political authority. This program will be a brisk tour through the early historical and cultural circumstances that have shaped the way men wear and groom their facial hair. The ancient Egyptians viewed body hair as vulgar or bestial and regarded its removal as essential. The beard, however, was a true status symbol. Kings were hailed as gods. The pharaoh was absolute ruler and he, or she, alone was permitted the distinction of a beard. Pharaonic beards were usually square-shaped, sometimes braided, painted, or dusted with gold. These beards were not real, nor were they meant to be. Egyptian art regularly portrays the strap that held the beard upon their rulers' faces. This ornamental pseudo-beard was a symbol of royal authority, analogous to a crown or scepter. In this way, the beard in ancient Egypt was arguably gender-blind. Some female pharaohs chose to honor the hair-suit tradition upon assuming power, wearing false beards to maintain the appearance of divinity, the most famous of who being Hatshepsut, who ruled a peaceful and prosperous Egypt for more than 20 years. Four and a half centuries after Hatshepsut, when King David ruled Israel, beards had become an assertion of warrior prowess. When the new king of Ammonites has the Israeli ambassador's locks shorn, it was an aggressive act of humiliation. To spare them further degradation, King David ordered his ambassadors to stay in Jericho until their beards grew back. The Hebrew Bible is full of stories that feature lost or damaged hair and braids. Samson and Delilah, while not explicitly concerning the beard, is perhaps the most famous tale. A clear-cut warning if you'll pardon the pun, of the strength and power that can be lost when hair is removed. Beards had strong cultural significance for the ancient Greeks. Men of power would often be addressed by men of lower standing with a submissive touch to their beards. Greek men made promises and swore oaths on their beards. They also believed that if you touched a friend's beard while asking for a favor, he was obliged to grant your wish. Greek beards were often curled with tongs to keep them tidy and looking full. Soldiers would primp their beards before battle as a sign of their honor and bravery. Weak or cowardly soldiers would have their beards forcibly shaved as a sign of their crimes. It would take one of history's greatest conquerors to reverse the conviction that facial hair equated manhood. As Alexander the Great prepared his armies for a final clash with the Persian Emperor for control of Asia, he ordered his Macedonian soldiers to shave their beards. Centuries later, ancient historian Plutarch would quote Alexander's reasoning as, Don't you know that in battles there is nothing handier to grasp than a beard? In all likelihood, this line is a complete fabrication. Every image of Alexander's likeness that survives features a smooth-faced man. Alexander deliberately and brazenly patterned his image after later depictions of the Greek heroes Hercules and Achilles to convey his own heroic image. In ordering his men to shear their beards, he was not attempting to give them a fighting advantage. Rather, he was making his men look more like him. Shaving their faces marked their allegiance. With his victory against the Persians, Alexander ushered in a new political, economic, and cultural order throughout the Middle East. Despite his death a few years later, his image and ideas would live on in the smooth faces of the following Hellenistic rulers and their subjects. While it would take several centuries for Rome to fully adopt Greek culture, leaders such as Scipio, Julius Caesar and his heir Augustus all adopted the clean-shaven appearance as a mark of refinement, an honorable man in the mold of mythic and historic heroes. And, as Rome commanded the Western world, 
shaving prevailed. The first true beard movement came when Roman Emperor Hadrian, of Hadrian Wall fame, reversed the course of facial hair history and grew out a bountiful beard. He did not choose to do so, as fable persists, to cover blemishes on his face, but rather as an expression of the Stoicism philosophy he observed. For close to a century, men of power would elect an image of manliness endorsed by philosophy rather than the heroic images of conquerors past. And so it went throughout the rest of Roman history. Beards came and went as rulers and ideologies shifted until the collapse of the Roman Empire. In the Middle Ages that followed, Christianity would similarly embrace the beard controversy, devising periodic arguments for and then against facial hair, eventually giving us the most recognizable bearded man in Western civilization. Throughout the course of history, beards and mustaches have represented everything from wisdom and goodness to mysticism and villainy. They have become the symbols of revolution and revulsion. There are famous beards and infamous beards. The connection between grooming and identity persists today, with clean-shaven men viewed as principled and approachable, whereas the bearded man is identified as independent and non-conformist. Each choice continues to redefine our values and norms of what it means to be a man within our culture and society. There is so much more to discover about the history of facial hair and its meaning in life today. Check out these resources for more information.